Stephen, a familiar story now. What's happening with Shimao? Yeah, well, of course, uh, the big concern, of course, over Evergrande, Kaiser, and others is uh, what kind of contagion this would happen. And is it uh, due directly, of course, to the liquidity squeeze that is happening in China because of those, uh, perhaps some would say, overbearing regulations on uh, uh, by, from the government? So it's particularly worrying, and that's why we saw a sudden sell-off in its shares and uh, bond prices, not only local but dollar bonds uh, by Shermal plummeting yesterday, Monday. Uh, that's why it's particularly worrying to the market when a company like Shermal, which is fairly highly rated, well, relatively speaking, uh, higher rated, uh, it, it has investment grade ratings uh, on some of its bond offerings as well as, you know, this is a, a company that is widely considered a stronger borrower and one that has a better cash and liquidity position than some of the other aforementioned companies that have defaulted that you mentioned, China Evergrande as well as uh, Kaiser uh, last week. This is China's 13th biggest developer by contracted sales, also one of the largest debt issuers with about $10.1 billion in outstanding local and offshore bonds. Also, its onshore unit, uh, Shanghai Shimao, reporting about $15.6 billion in total liabilities as of the end of September. Now, the company, after the sell-off yesterday that we saw, is saying in a statement it is looking into market rumors, which it blamed for the sell-off. Uh, but again, a potential collapse, and I'm maybe getting way ahead of myself, a potential collapse of a higher-rated firm like Shermao, which as of Monday still held both investment and better speculative-grade ratings, would unravel, of course, this tentative recovery among Chinese dollar junk bonds. Uh, so we'll have to wait this one out. Just when we thought there was going to be resolution, at least an orderly dispersal and debt restructuring of China Evergrande, uh, and, and the, we saw the recovery in the dollar bonds and the junk bond markets in China, now we get a large company like Shermao, uh, long considered uh, one of the more healthy uh, home developers in China, <laughs> seeing, uh, you know, questions about whether it's going to be able to meet its uh, short-term and near-term, mm -hmm. yeah, liabilities. The turbulence that we saw in the CDS graph really telling. But, um, Steve, in order for these companies to meet their obligations, some of them have to convert yuan to dollars, right? And it looks mm. like regulators yep. may be making it a little bit easier for them. Yeah, I mean, this is according to sources. I mean, the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, known as SAFE, is not necessarily telegraphing what they are allowing, but they do take these things into consideration. When you have a lot of these developers and a lot of these dollar bond issuers who need to convert their yuan into dollar, it takes time, and there's a lot of ch regulatory checks, and they also try to keep a check on, of course, these large payments uh, because of their concern for capital outflows. But with the stronger yuan, there's been less outflows right now but again we're hearing from sources saying that safe the the branches of safe state administration of foreign exchange have instructed those branches uh, to have enough liquidity on hand uh, for the last couple of months they've been doing that to meet those developers needs and other companies that meet, need to meet uh, their dollar bond obligations so we'll, we'll watch to see how this uh, you know transpires uh, but uh, it, it would make sense if these uh, developers are under immense stress to pay off their dollar uh, obligations that the state administration of foreign exchange will have to help facilitate those payments.